How do you respond to first this poll and some of the submissions that have been made um, by Kofi? Yeah, no, uh, <clears throat> first permit me to say good morning to one uh, Ghanaian who has gone on retirement and served his country so well, uh, one Mr. Francis Ahiachi in the GRA in Ho. <clears throat> you see, when it comes to polls, the basic principle underlining why polls are conducted is to give us a bird's eye view of what may happen in the future. It may not necessarily be accurate. And therefore, I want to reiterate again that I find some submissions to be that of persons who are partially educated. Because when Dr. Musa, Mr. Musa Dankwa is saying is that, look, I have reached out to some people. He has not reached out to all the 18 million Ghanaians. In fact, even if he reached out to all the 18 million voters, some may tell him lies. Some may not even tell him the truth. Some may abstain. But you see, in the NDC, we would always have to say we welcome such things. It does not mean that all our work and effort will be based on the poll. Because you will need to put in your own strategy and which will inform the decisions you are making, the steps you are taking, in order to also guide you. So when polls come in, it's also just add, it's an added value to what you are uh, 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 working towards. A poll may come and even be in favor of the NDC, but the NDC may still say, no, we disagree. Maybe he says you are, NDC is winning with 52%. We may say, no, per our own checks, we're expecting to win by 53%. But when you have people think that once it doesn't favor us, we must destroy it at all and then, and then destroy the credibility of the person in touch and consistently rather keep mentioning one other name, which is also another very discredited character, then what exactly are we doing? And you see, just before entering your studio here, uh, on the sister station's uh, 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 platform, it's been revealed that even the, the office of the president also has f done some research. And according to them, uh, there will be a runoff and al Haji Baumia is going to win the runoff. When a party in power is beginning to tell you that there's going to be a runoff, that is a signal to tell you that they have lost hope, they have seen every signal that they have lost, and therefore let us find a way to make it look the other way. Because, look, if you're a party in power, you are in government, and you've done that well, look at the record of the NBC, NPP as well, from the 2016 election down. What are, currently, as we speak, what is the numbers in even the, the, the legislature? If you have done that well, why have the people not reposed that confidence? Or why has it not translated into even your, your, your members of parliament? But it's been 137, 137. And this, even we all know the circumstances that resulted in all of this. So you see, when polls are conducted, it serves as a guide. You're supposed to say, okay, when this is done, this is what it means. And he has stated clearly the, the, the mode he used to conduct this is, yeah. is, 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 is poll. And I am very worried. And don't forget that even... One of the other concerns, in addition to the economy, which focuses on food, uh, jobs, education, and health, is, is, is our judiciary. The Mo Ibrahim Foundation also conducted a research that still showed us that from 2017 to date, the judiciary has lost its confidence, has lost its reputation by 30%. That is an indictment, an indictment and it lays credence to what Kandapa said some time back, that some of the verdicts that our judges have been uh, given out were so suspicious. We are also in this country, and we saw some of the exposés done by uh, Anas Aramiya or Anas, where judges were as expensive or as cheap as just a mere goat. And so when all these things are going on, you, you do not want to be a hypocrite to cherry pick as and when it favors you. And when it doesn't, then you say, oh, there's another one there that looks, well, we would even welcome that of Dr. Smart Sapon and look into it and say what exactly is credible, what is sensible he's saying in there. Let's see what makes sense to us, what doesn't make sense, what is logical, what is seen to be more politically affiliated than the other. Then it guides you. But if you think that you want to just rubbish everything, well, the truth is that Characters surrounding the vice president and the, the flag bearer of the NPP are the ones who are sinking his campaign most. Because even though he is not even helping himself... Which characters are you talking the about? The very people who speak for the flag bearer, the people who speak for the NPP, they are not even speaking the truth. They are not speaking the truth to him. And then he has a running mate who is supposed to also be 
up there. But you've listened to the running mate's utterances every now and then. Each time he speaks, it seems al Hajiba Omiya will make an effort to recruit 10 uh, voters who will assure him of voting for him. The running mate goes to speak and then he takes away four of the people who now repel that they will not vote again. Then the spokesperson also come again and they make it look like no. Where are you getting I, these numbers from? Oh, no, I'm just giving you an example of, of things that is happening. And it's so scary, but I belong to the NDC and I should be happy over that. And I'm very happy over that because the way they are going about the, the conduct of their campaign and all of that, has this is the first time in history a party is in power. And people are saying that, look, if you are saying that you do A, B, C, I am asking you that you are in power. You are the head of the economic management team. The Ghanaian is unemployed and has not gotten any job. Therefore, he has resorted to betting. Now, when he bets and he loses, it is his cost. When he wins, you are saying you are charging him 10%. When he, when he, he wins and you charge that 10%, and his mother calls him and says, oh, I am not well, send me some money for, for to, my medical bill. You will charge E-Levy on that same amount. After that, if you withdraw your money to go and effect some payment somewhere, you will be charged a very senseless COVID-19 levy. As if that is not even enough, if actually your, your father is a driver, or the person is even a driver and had to also drive his vehicle from another point to the other, he will have to be paying emissions tax. And the Ghanaian is telling you that, al Haji Baumia, the president once said that you have all the wisdom in this world. You are the economic messiah, the economic whiskey. Remove this tax now if it is something you agree that you are not in favor of. And this has been why they've been going on merry-go-round all this while. Because if you want to do something, you must lead by example. Show the way. Let us see you exemplifying what you claim you will do. But you come and be promising different things around the very things that are worrying Ghanaians. The Ghanaian on the street there is struggling to survive. How much is a bowl of cake? If you want to buy tomatoes, how much does it cost? How much does it cost you to prepare soup at home? And how long will it last at home? Marriages are even breaking as a result of this. Then you hear them every day wanting to talk, doom so, free SHS, etc. What exactly has been your solutions? Tell us what the problems are. Are these the bold solutions? And it is very worrying. So when you have comments that is just aimed at rubbishing polls, I am sure and I am sorry, but that is an act of people who are partially educated.